Welcome to my course uh, Electrochemical Energy Storage and uh, this is uh, module number 1 Introduction to Energy Storage and Conversion and today uh, we are in lecture number 2 where I will be talking about the primary batteries and secondary batteries. You know the primary and secondary batteries uh, I already introduced in my last lecture. Uh, and uh, this is an overview of various types of primary and secondary batteries and uh, this will be elaborated throughout the course. So, today I will give you a, just an introduction of various types of primary and uh, rechargeable batteries, uh, but we will elaborate it as we proceed with the course. So, in this particular lecture, we will talk about dry cell and alkaline cell, which all of you, you know, you purchase this kind of battery from the market. Also, lithium ion primary cell that is um, come in, uh, in terms of a small button. Lead acid rechargeable battery, all of you know, in your uh, scooter or in your uh, toto uh, or motorcycle, you use it for ignition purpose and also for lighting the headlight and side lights, you use this lead acid rechargeable batteries. Then we will introduce the lithium ion rechargeable cell, very hot topic nowadays, particularly for the advent of electric vehicles. Lithium ion rechargeable cell, they are being studied with aggression. And certain other rechargeable batteries, uh, including the redox flow battery also I will introduce and uh, elaborate uh, as a latter part of my course. And finally, a new concept of lithium air rechargeable battery, which I consider it is the ultimate battery. We will also talk about uh, this, the working principle. <coughs> now, uh, you know, in the last lecture, I talked about electrolyzer mode and power source mode. In electrolyzer mode, the battery is eventually recharged and in the power source mode, the battery is discharged. So, already the uh, primary battery which are only discharged after each discharge you throw it out. So, that is that has already been introduced and the electrolyzer mode adopting the electrolyzer mode in the electrochemical cell you can basically recharge the battery. So, batteries are referred to the electrochemical or the galvanic cell. They store energy in the form of chemical energy and electrochemical reactions are termed galvanic. Galvanic reactions, they are thermodynamically favorable. In a separate lecture, we will talk about the thermodynamic principle. Here, del G is negative. Uh, the free energy change is negative and occurs spontaneously when two materials of different positive standard reduction potential are connected by an electronic load. So, we will talk about the standard reduction potential in more details in my forthcoming lectures. So, bear with me. The material with lower positive standard reduction potential that undergoes an oxidation reaction providing electrons to the external circuit of the material with higher positive standard reduction potential which in turn undergoes a reduction reaction. So, this particular reactions already uh, we have talked about in lecture number 1. Remember zinc and copper. So, zinc is getting oxidized, it throws electron to an external circuit, it gets oxidized and this electron goes to the uh, other copper electrode where from the solution copper plus is getting reduced and it is electrodeposited with the copper. So, the same principle. So, this half cell reactions occur concurrently and allow for the conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy. So, it keep on doing it and basically you get the energy, the electron in terms of uh, electron does some work to the load uh, to the external circuit. So, material with lower positive standard reduction potential that is called the negative electrode or anode on discharge while material with higher positive standard reduction is called positive electrode or cathode on discharge. I am stressing the term discharge because once you charge it, this is just reversed. 
so that you have understood when I was talking about the electrolyzer mode and specifically in the last lecture I tabulated this concept. The electrolyte is an ion conducting material, it could be aqueous, it could be molten, it could be a solid solution where the separator is a membrane that physically prevents the direct contact between these two electrodes and allow ions but not electron to pass through. Two final part that required for the formation of a battery are the two terminals. So, we will talk about this the construction in details. So, you know the secondary battery uh, and primary battery, primary battery usually you can easily identify because this you can purchase from the market and it cannot be recharged. Once you use it, you just throw it or dispose it, do not dispose it anywhere uh, or everywhere and uh, you will see their construction, how they work and uh, rechargeable battery, uh, they are used in a variety of application depending on the type of energy that they are given. It starts from smartphone, tablet, laptop then power tool, uh, then uh, your medical facilities, then your small scooty and UPS and then finally, the hybrid electric vehicle or electric vehicle. So, all these applications and uh, uh, it started from the cordless phone of course. So, the latter part of it is for the consumer uses and the upper part is industrial use and there are a lot of advent of the battery material and throughout the course we will be talking about different types of battery which are not only useful for the consumer electronic applications, but they are also equally useful for industrial application in details. So, first we will talk about the primary battery and primary batteries they have a set of characteristics. This primary battery are not easily rechargeable, they are only discharged and disposed of. Many of this so called dry cells in which electrolyte is not liquid, but in the form of a paste or similar. In the last lecture always we talked about liquid electrolyte, but in dry cells they have a paste like electrolyte, we will be talking about it. Electrochemical reactions that occur are not easily reversible and the cell is operated until the active material in the cell uh, in one or both the electrodes are completely exhausted. So, once they are exhausted you just throw it off. Recharging the primary cell it is dangerous and that can cause the battery to explode. So, never try to recharge a primary battery. So, the primary battery are designed to operate at low currents and therefore, they having they are having long lifetime. So, you cannot use primary battery for a heavy duty applications. So, there are certain batteries they uh, will give you little bit heavy duty, but it is not uh, very common. Primary batteries they have high capacity and that is measured in terms of ampere hour in one hour how much current that you can drain out of the battery per kilogram of the battery. So, that is a specific capacity and higher specific energy in terms of watt hour per kilogram and a higher initial voltage than the uh, secondary batteries uh, of uh, comparable chemistry. But now, the chemistry have changed quite a bit and we will talk about all these parameters, this capacity, specific energy, specific capacity uh, in more details in my forthcoming lecture. So, do not worry too much about this terminology at this point. They are usually used for portable device, toys, watches, hearing aids and medical implants. So, no heavy use as I have shown in consumer electronic application, primary batteries are used. So, there are various types of dimensions of the commercial available batteries and you go to the market, you talk about mostly AA type of battery or AAA type of battery that actually uh, determines, uh, denotes the diameter and the height of the battery. So, as you can see AAA is little bit thinner in diameter as compared to AA, 
C battery is fatter. So, likewise you can have battery size depending on their diameter and height and they are uh, following, they are, they act, actually follow international standard. There are certain flat cell as well. Uh, so, in the flat cell you have length, width and thickness and they are all cylindrical cell and they are all flat cell and uh, some of this flat cell is also called rectangular cells. So, as you can see this uh, dimensions they are uh, very very stringent because depending on the dimension of the battery you make your electronic consumer electronic devices. So, therefore, they are very specific about the size and their dimension and their tolerance. Now, I will introduce certain battery characteristics and as I have said that we will discuss all these things in details later. So, open circuit voltage is the maximum voltage in the charge state when current is 0. So, that means you have a huge load. So, battery is basically not connected positive and negative terminal. <clears throat> current, low current, activation losses, predominant, maximum current, mass transfer is a limitation. Again, we will come back to it later when we will talk about the kinetics. Energy density, the energy that can be delivered per unit volume of the cell. So, this is volumetric energy density and specific energy density, energy that can be delivered per unit weight of the cell. Power density is the power that can be derived per unit weight of the cell and this is watt per kg. Capacity as I said, it is the quantity of electricity involved in the electrochemical reaction. Usually it is defined as ampere hour per gram. And there are cycle lives, the number of cycles before the capacity falls to 80 percent. So, this is also termed as cycleability. You keep on using it uh, repeated times. Uh, that is only uh, valid for uh, rechargeable battery, not for primary battery. So, for prim primary battery cycle life does not have any meaning. It is pertinent to the rechargeable type of battery. Now, we will talk about three important primary battery. They are termed as dry cell or Leclanche cell, sometimes it is called. And you already know the construction. Uh, of the battery, it should have an anode, it should have a cathode uh, or a positive electrode or a negative electrode or a working electrode or counter electrode. They all uh, having similar types of uh, meaning and you have uh, the electrolyte, right? And also you need to pack everything in a compact form. So, that gives you battery. So, for that you need to have terminals and stuff like that. So, accordingly, if you just uh, um, um, arrange it, so you have a current collector cum cathode. So, in case of this dry cell, graphite rod is buried in positive cathode, which is manganese dioxide and carbon mixture. So, as you can see, manganese dioxide and carbon mixture and you have a graphite rod that is buried into it. If you break a dry cell, you will see these structures. And uh, this is called the positive terminal, so called positive terminal. And uh, electrolyte here is aqueous zinc chloride and ammonium chloride. And it is formed in terms of a paste, so ammonium chloride paste and that is mixed with this mixed with this manganese dioxide. An anode is the container itself. The battery container is zinc made that is anode. So, zinc is a uh, container and we call this is a negative terminal. So, anode reaction you know that uh, it will get oxidized. So, depending on the standard reduction potential, zinc is more electropositive. So, zinc is oxidized and cathode reaction is a bit complicated manganese dioxide, it is having a paste with H2O. Uh, it is basically taking this electron and the overall cell reaction you can add it up and this is your cell reaction. So, electron is delivered in the outside load and the battery is in operating condition. So, there is one problem for this kind of battery which you may have um, 
experienced that if you turn on the torch light for long period of time, you will see that the intensity of the light is progressively reduced and then finally the battery stops working. And you wait for some time and again turn it on, then you will see again uh, it, it, it lights off. So, when uh, you uh, uh, do it for uh, continuous uh, part, then this zinc ion in the zinc anode part, they accumulates and hydroxyl ions, uh, they accumulate uh, in the other manganese oxide part and uh, due to this charge accumulation, this reaction rate reduces and electron flow diminishes and that causes this. When not in use, then ammonia, ammonium ion in aqueous, it reacts with hydroxyl aqueous ion to form this and zinc ion also reacts with this to form this and uh, eventually they get separated and again you can use this dry cell. So, these dry cells are not for continuous use. The primary battery which is termed as alkaline cell their construction is a bit uh, uh, different. Here you can see the current collector or cathode is manganese oxide and carbon mixture. Surrounding the anode which is the positive terminal is nickel plated steel can. So, the cathode material, uh, the position of the cathode material is a bit different because the anode here as you can see which is zinc powder. Uh, and instead of your graphite rod, there is a uh, current collector which is brass pin. Uh, so, this is your negative terminal and then surrounding that you have manganese oxide and carbon mixture. So, construction wise it is a bit different and electrolyte here is aqueous 30 percent of potassium hydroxide solution. And you remember that most of this alkaline cell when not in use or if it is overused then many times it comes out from the battery and that uh, poses problem with the electrical connectors of the devices. So, one should be cautious once the battery is down immediately should be replaced. There is a porous cylinder barrier that separates anode and cathode material usually the voltage for both the dry cell and this kind of cell is 1.5 volt that is decided by the standard reduction potential of the material in use in the construction that is a cathode and anode. You are also familiar with this uh, button cell, uh, they are lithium coil cell primary battery. Here also the current collector and cathode is manganese dioxide and carbon mixture that is coated in a stainless steel that forms the positive terminal positive terminal is the stainless steel base. Electrolyte is a cloth which is impregnated with a lithium based salt in a polar organic liquid. So, one difference is there from the dry cell or alkaline cell they use aqueous electrolyte. So, the voltage are limited because you are using water. So, water can get dissociated if you go beyond certain voltage. So, you cannot increase the voltage. Also, the voltage depends on various other parameters. So, lithium for example, which is highly electropositive and that leads to very large, relatively large voltage. And this porous cylindrical barrier that separates this anode and cathode for short circuiting. The reaction is pretty straightforward, lithium gets oxidized and manganese get reduced and the cell reaction is this lithium reacts with manganese dioxide to form lithium manganese oxide and here the standard electrode uh, standard EMF that you get is 3.2 volt which is reasonably high as compared to your dry cell or alkaline cell which is typically 1.5 volt. Now, we will talk about the secondary battery where you can recharge it once it is completely discharged and lead acid battery is the forerunner. Here the current collector and cathode is lead grid 
that is filled with lead sulfate and lead oxide. Electrolyte is dilute H2SO4, so one should be cautious about opening this battery because of the possible acid burn. Anode is the lead grid filled with lead and lead sulfate. Cell potential, one can calculate it, it's about 2, two volt. So, the reaction here is straightforward. Lead, this is protonated and gives um, two electron and cathodic reaction and lead oxide that is reduced to form lead sulphate. So, the cell discharge uh, reaction is given by this relation. You just, you can work it on, um, add this two up and uh, electron and uh, this uh, can be cut and you can get the overall cell reaction. So, each of this cell will give you 2 volts. So, if you want a 12 volt battery, then you will have to connect several such cell, about 6 such cell in series in order to increase a 12 volt battery. If you want to increase the capacity of the battery, you will have to connect it in parallel. Similarly, uh, nickel cadmium battery that was uh, quite popular uh, in 90s. Um, this uh, uses cadmium which is not environmentally friendly. So, later nowadays uh, their use has been discontinued almost. Aqueous KOH electrolyte is used with nickel hydride. The discharge reaction at negative electrode cadmium reacts with uh, hydroxyl ion and positive electrode nickel OOH uh, reacts with electron to form this and this is the overall uh, discharge reactions and during recharge the reaction goes from right to left. Uh, so, again you can recharge it back. The alkaline electrolyte is commonly KOH is not consumed in this reaction. Therefore, it is specific gravity unlike the lead acid battery is not a guide for the state of the charge. Advantage is uh, it is rugged, it has long life and it is economical and it is having good high discharge rate and that is for that is why it is used for the power tools and relatively low energy density but it is toxic as i said cadmium is involved the construction of this kind of battery cylindrical cell you first uh, have anode separator and cathode and then you roll it and pack it inside a cylindrical cell to form this battery so, I will separately take all this battery in relatively uh, more details afterwards. This lecture is primarily aimed to make you familiar with different types of battery. So, do not worry too much about how they are made and what are the re reaction sequence and how the voltages so are calculated and stuff like that at this point. Nickel metal hydride battery. The negative electrode reaction occurring in a nickel metal hydride cell is uh, this one and on the positive electrode nickel oxyhydroxide is formed. Uh, the charge reaction is uh, left to right and the discharge reaction is right to left. So, it is having a high energy density, uh, 40 percent higher than nickel cadmium, it is non-toxic it is having reduced life, discharge rate is usually 0.2 to 0.5 C. What is this C rate that I will define later? 1 C means that you discharge your battery within 1 hour. So, if it is 0.2 C that means you discharge your battery in 5 hours. It is 0.5 C means you discharge your battery in 2 hours. More expensive uh, than nickel cadmium battery. Now, we talk about lithium rechargeable battery. The construction is uh, a bit different. Current collector and cathode is aluminum as a current collector and typical cathode is lithium cobalt oxide and you mix with acetylene black and PBDF binder. So, I mentioned in my first lecture that uh, not always it is a metal plate you insert in the electrolyte, but sometimes you have a composite electrode and this composite electrode you are uh, putting inside the electrolyte. 
Electrolyte is LiPF6, one molar. It is dissolved in EC and DEC, one is to one. Anode is copper, acts as a current collector, graphite with carbon black and PVDF as a binder. The cell potential is pretty high, 3.6 volt and that is why these batteries are very important. It was commercialized by Sony in 1990. The advantage of lithium primary cell extend to the secondary cell, high power available and lightness because of the uh, density, low density of lithium, it is ideal for portable electronic devices. And as I said, Sony commercialized it in 1991. And the electrolyte is uh, uh, with the lithium primary cell, a non-aqueous solution of lithium salts in a polar liquid. Now, you can talk about the reaction. Anode reaction is uh, uh, the graphite lithium is intercollected and cathode reaction is uh, lithium is taking out from the cathode during the charging operation and cell discharge is from the graphite lithium again you are dragging it through the electrolyte and put it back on the um, cathode material. So, the simplified uh, relation if you see that lithium uh, forms lithium ion and electron and cathode reaction is um, one of the transition metal cation here in case is cobalt which is in plus 4 state that is getting reduced. So, finally, this is the cell reaction. So, you can do uh, charge and discharge. So, this kind of batteries are reusable. Other secondary batteries, uh, they are nickel hydrogen battery negative electrode is hydrogen and positive electrode is nickel oxygen hydroxide, oxyhydroxide. It is specific, specifically developed for aerospace application. Now, hydrogen electrode, they consist of a thin uh, film of platinum black catalyst that is supported on the nickel foil substrate backed by a gas diffusion membrane. And nickel electrode consists of a porous sintered nickel powder substrate supported by a nickel screen and that is electrochemically impregnated with nickel hydroxide. Separator is a thin porous zirconia ceramic cloth supporting a concentrated KOE solution. Overall cell reaction you can work it out, but the finally this is hydrogen and nickel oxyhydroxide, it forms nickel hydroxide. One of the major advantage is the tolerance of overcharge and reversal. On overcharge, oxygen generates at the nickel electrode and recombines at hydrogen electrode to form H2. During reversal, H2 is released at the positive electrode and consumed at the negative electrode at the same rate. So, there is no pressure build up um, uh, change in the electrolyte concentration is also ruled out. Similarly, uh, we have uh, specialized aqueous secondary electron batteries in the form of silver zinc battery. Negative electrode is composed of a mixture of zinc, zinc oxide as a binder and additives are also uh, used to minimize the so called dendritic growth. Positive electrode is prepared by placing silver positive active material which is basically sintered at relatively high temperature on a silver plated um, copper grid uh, or a perforated sheet. So, the separator should prevent silver migration into the negative electrode to control the zincate migration to preserve the integrity of the zinc electrode. Typical separators are uh, cellophane uh, sheet or nylon mats. The overall reaction is given like this and zinc silver oxide battery has a theoretical energy density 300 watt hour per kg and exhibits very low internal impedance. 
high energy density makes them very useful for aerospace and military applications but it is having poor life however the battery can discharge at high current that is one advantage about 6c 6c uh, means uh, about uh, um, 10 uh, minutes 10 minutes uh, it can um, uh, it can be uh, uh, discharged and uh, it suffers uh, uh, self discharge uh, so shelf life is not that attractive specialized aqueous zinc battery includes nickel zinc battery so negative electrode is zinc and positive electrode is nickel um, oxygen hydroxide oxyhydroxide so nickel and zinc battery has higher energy density then nickel cadmium system it is economic it exhibits good rate capability and cycle life and its separator is a thin and porous jro2 ceramic uh, supporting a concentrated koh so the overall reaction is given like this and uh, zinc cannot uh, has a solubility in the concentrated koh and dendrite growth on charge and migration so to reduce the zinc and zinc oxide solubility um, usually low concentration koh is utilized sometimes calcium hydroxide additive is also added and microporous polypropylene separator which is otherwise chemically stable in concentrated alkaline solution that proves to be an excellent barrier for zinc migration towards the nickel electrode. In earlier battery also, we had a problem of silver migration, silver zinc oxide battery. This is a new type of uh, stationary uh, system, we call it a flow battery. So, this flow batteries, uh, they store and release electrical energy based on reversible electrochemical reactions in two liquid electrolyte. So, liquid electrolyte is pumped through this chamber and uh, the cell has as you can see two flow loops which are physically separated by an ion or proton exchange membrane. Electrolytes flow through separate loops and undergo chemical reaction inside the cell with ion or proton exchange through the membrane. The electron exchange occurs through the external circuit uh, due to this process and uh, capacity of this system can be greatly increased by increasing the amount of the solution of the uh, electrolytic tank. So, huge electrolytic tank one can use to increase the capacity, but suddenly the all the weights will uh, be incorporated here and uh, this will lead to uh, low energy density for this kind of battery. I will cite two quick example which follows this. One is vanadium redox flow battery. In the vanadium redox flow battery, the two lobes are separated by a membrane, a PEM membrane. PEM uh, uh, electrolyte is prepared by um, dissolving V2O5 in H2O so forth. Uh, electrolyte in positive electrolyte loop contained VO2 plus and VO whole 2 plus while electrolyte in the negative electrolyte loop contains only V3 plus and V2 plus. So, vanadium is having various balanced state. So, the redox reaction in negative electrode is something like this, it is getting oxidized, the positive electrode, uh, this is getting reduced, the open circuit voltage is about 1.4 volt is observed at 50 percent of charge while fully charged state shows more than 1.6 volt OCV. When fully discharged it shows open circuit voltage around 1 volt. So, vanadium uh, this redox flow battery which I will um, discuss in details a part of uh, another module uh, 
they have extremely large capacity which allows is application on current regulation of highly unstable power source such as renewable energy wind and solar power so this redox flow battery is the solution extremely rapid response time that makes this for uninterrupted power supply type of application replacing the lead acid battery so for stationary use this is the answer and disadvantage for this is their low energy density about 25 watt hour per kg due to the electrolyte um, and it is having a uh, low charge efficiency also the weight of the pump etc that also uh, contributes to this zinc bromine battery is another example so similar uh, type of construction anode side zinc is oxidized cathode side bromine aqueous solution um, undergoes this reaction so this is the total cell reaction so zinc bromine cell is made from bipolar electrode carbon and plastic composite material a micropolar plastic that separates between the electrode allow the ions to pass and during discharge zinc bromide is formed and becomes dissolved in the electrolyte so during charge bromine is liberated at the positive electrode where zinc is deposited on the negative electrode with the help of an organic agent it forms an oily liquid polybromide complex which impede the liquid phase bromine diffusion towards the zinc deposit another stationary system is uh, uh, the thermal batteries sodium sulfide batteries negative electrode is sodium electrolyte is beta alumina this is a good sodium ion conducting electrolyte positive electrode is sulfur operating temperature is around 300 to 350 degree celsius and both sodium and sulfur is in its liquid form so solid electrolyte has high sodium ion conductivity in discharge you can see the sodium reacts with the sulfur to form and the voltage is about 2.7 volt and then followed by this uh, reaction so the yielding average voltage about 1.9 volt so while you charge the reaction reverses from na2s3 to elemental sulfur and sodium form and marked resistance is increased due to the insulating sulfur so therefore sulfur is impregnated in the layer of graphite but it is having excellent cyclability about 5000 to 6000 cycles it can withstand and additives are added in beta alumina which is the uh, um, ionically conducting um, solid electrolyte uh, to increase its ionic conductivity and reduce the moisture sensitivity so sodium sulfur batteries is widely used in japan and uh, capacity is as high as 57 megawatt hour Finally we talk about a next generation rechargeable battery which is lithium air it is a very simple battery current collector and cathode is a porous carbon plus some kind of catalyst because one end air is coming electrolyte is a non aqueous electrolyte same as lithium ion battery lipf6 in polypropylene an anode is a lithium metal the cell reaction is pretty straightforward lithium uh, plus electron oxygen it forms li2o li2o2 and then it gets dissociated cathodes cannot be exposed in ordinary air because water vapor will start to react with li2o2 to produce lithium hydroxide and carbon dioxide will form lithium carbonate so that is one disadvantage you cannot use air uh, the ambient air for this reaction to take place and also so you have to carry the oxygen cylinder and uh, oxygen cylinder uh, carriage is uh, a problem 
uh, for mobile applications. And cathode must be enclosed in a protective membrane because of this uh, infiltration of other gases. And uh, uh, in fact, we are eagerly waiting uh, for such battery for electric vehicle applications in near future. So, the study material for this particular lecture is taken from um, different sources which is marked as red and uh, modern batteries is an excellent book by Vincent and Scorsetti. Uh, I would like you to go through the relevant portion. So, in this particular lecture, we talked about primary batteries, dry and alkaline cell, then we talked about lithium batteries, then lead acid secondary battery, other types of secondary battery including thermal batteries. Then we talked about lithium ion rechargeable cell, we introduced the redox flow battery concept, thermal batteries and finally, lithium air rechargeable batteries. Thank you for your attention.